Jason Roy Kyle has been talking with Hall of Famer Fergie Jenkins, who recently had his number 31 retired by the Cubs this past weekend. Fergie, tell us what that meant to you. Well, the important part of it is that the organization is recognizing what you did as a player on and off the field. And I went in with uh, Greg Maddox, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, he wore 31, I think, for almost nine or ten years. Right. And myself, I wore it for ten years. So to have a company like that and having your flag fly on, on the poles, one left, one right field, I think it's sensational. Special day for you. It was. Uh, I, I just think that the, the organization recognizing what you were capable and what you did, sure. and it's for the fans, basically. Right. And a beautiful day. Weather it was. It was it couldn't have been a better day than that. Yeah. Sunday, no rain, sun shining. Right. Uh, a three-time All-Star. You won a Cy Young in, in 1971, inducted into the Hall of Fame, over 3,000 strikeouts, 284 career wins. If you had to pick one memorable moment in your career, what do you think that would be? Well, joining the Cubs after the trade, uh, I, I think it was kind of a test. You know, whenever you join a new ball club, you always want to show what your capabilities are. Right. And my first relief appearance, uh, pitch four innings of relief, I drove in both runs, beat the Dodgers 2 nothing, hit a home run. That's what I was going to ask you. You were a reliever. Yes. When, when you first came, came, first came up. up. That's right. Yeah. Okay. With the Phillies. They were teaching me how to be a relief pitcher in the minor leagues with the Phillies. And then when I came up with the Phillies in 65, I got into about seven or eight ball games the following year, one or two games, and then I got traded. And then... You know, tell us what it's like, uh, uh, the difficulties and the experience of playing when you did coming up in the 60s, obviously, as, as a, a black player. Well, it was difficult. Uh, I didn't have the experiences of, of what Jackie Robinson had to share. Sure. Uh, I mean, he had a, a tougher time. Uh, he set the stage for a lot of the players playing now, uh, like Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, uh, Ernie Banks, myself, Billy Williams. So I just think that the players of color, had some difficulties. I, I played in Chattanooga for one season. Little Rock, Arkansas, mm-hmm. was with Dick Allen when he was there. Sure, we, uh, we we would hear slurs from time to time. A lot of it maybe not pointed at you directly. Right. Never any threats that we're going to do bodily harm to you for playing. But I was an athlete, and that was the first and foremost thing I was trying to do was to perform well. And I knew I wasn't going to stay long in certain cities if the organization thought that I was good enough to leave. So, right. And that's what happened. I, I played, first of all, Miami, Chattanooga, Little Rock, and got to the big leagues quick. You know, there was a story not too long ago in, the, in one of the Chicago papers um, kind of bashing Wrigley Field with, you You probably read it, and, sure. and Dusty Baker made a comment and, um, on how some of the black athletes were treated at Wrigley. Probably, probably fairly, I think, the story was. And yeah. since there hasn't been any incidents uh, here recently, I mean, how did the fans treat <laughs> How did the fans treat you know, Hey, my 10 years, uneventful. I played baseball. That was the fun part of it. Uh, you know, I, no threatening letters. Uh, I don't think... Well, I think one time in 69, I think Ernie Banks, I was one with him, sure. he had a threatening letter. Uh, every time he went to New York, there was always a rivalry right. there. Right. Sandal had a lot of threatening letters. But, I mean, the fun part of it was playing the game. You were safe on the field. That was your second home. So I, I enjoyed my 10 years with the Cubs. And then... You know, you just talked about Ernie Banks and Ronnie Santo, Billy Williams. What was it like playing with? I mean, you're talking about, you know, and I've got a question for you about Ronnie Santo. You know, do you think he's ever going to be inducted well, into the Hall of Fame? Well, the first part of that, uh, you know, rooming with a superstar, Ernie Banks, he had 500 home runs. Right. Billy Williams, uh, several times an all-star batting title. And then Ronnie with the juvenile diabetes. Right. You know, overcoming that and. Well, he lost both his legs. He's a broadcaster now, and I was hoping he was going to go in last year, but unfortunately it didn't happen. But I think that uh, at the time when Ronnie retired, he had the stats. He was third all-time for third baseman in the National League. Uh, Mike Schmidt was first, and then came uh, Eddie Matthews, and third was Ron Sato. And you think if you're third all-time in the National League, your, your, your time to get into the Hall of Fame should be short. But it's been almost 20 years since he retired and still not in the Hall of Fame. Right. And he seems to get he gets frustrated every year. You know, you you listen to him talk and you feel bad. Yeah. Uh, but that's the committee. It's every two years right. now. Right. And uh, his name has come up. And they've shortened the list now from 25 to 10. And he is one of the 10. And it's really unfortunate. This is uh, like the sixth voting. They put nobody in. And right. it's really too bad. Right. Uh, 
what advice would you give today's young athlete uh, striving to be a professional player? Well, first of all, you have to have fun. Then you have to get noticed. And then you have to be consistent. And I think as a youngster playing in Canada, all I was trying to do was to show people what my capabilities were. And at the age of 15, when I first started to pitch, I, I think that uh, people knew I was pretty raw. Right. <laughs> and uh, uh, my coach was Gene DeJura. He, he was an area scout that originally signed with the Cubs, played as high as, I think, double-A, triple-A, and, and he taught me how to pitch. He was a shortstop. Wow. So I, I just think that the raw part of me learning the game year to year really uh, was my uh, inspiration because I was learning something about the game on a year-to-year basis. And in the minor leagues, in the Philly organization, they were teaching me how to play and how to do it the correct way. And I got to, a chance to display it in a Cub uniform. So all the things I was taught early, and I used as a Cub. And we were some for four that. Yes, definitely, yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, lastly, before I let you go, what's the Cubs' chances for this year? Well, they're off to a pretty good start. They had a pretty good April. Not a great April, but pretty good. About 500 ball, and now it's into May. Let's hope they can put a little more wins together. And I thought the team last year winning 97 games should have been the ball club that, that would have been the team to do it. Now they've, they've changed personnel. <clears throat> I think about eight or nine players are not right. with the ball club that were the were right. them last year. So uh, they're off to a decent start, but let's hope they can put it together. Well, it was a great honor talking to you, and Thank I you. wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. that.